Hey, I'm David Levin, and welcome to Pop Goes the Culture, the -the behind-the-scenes and untold TV stories you probably wouldn't have known from the people who lived them. Today, in part five of our six-part conversation, Ernest Borgnine talks about the series Future Cop with John Amos, his philosophy of life, and why he loved doing characters on SpongeBob SquarePants and all dogs go to heaven. You gotta love this guy. I made a picture one time. I made a, a series out of Paramount one time. About, uh, we made about eight or ten of them, if not twelve, uh, about a, a robotic cop. Do you have any idea what that was called? Future Cop. Future Cop, With that was it. Future Cop. And <clears throat> I loved it. I thought it was marvelous. And uh, we cruised up and down the streets of Los Angeles, you know. I'll never forget one day. There was a bunch of fellas on a bunch of, on, on shovels right in the corner. And they're watching us, you know. And we pulled up to this corner and waiting to, you know, for the red light. And they're watching us. I, I said, can you imagine all this for a lousy $17,000 a day? <laughs> <laughs> they fell off their shovel. <laughs> <laughs> to wish, <laughs> to wish you could. <laughs> Not a bad living. <laughs> like my grandfather would say, from this you make a living. There you go. <laughs> oh my, John Amos said the best piece of advice he ever got was from you. Well, thank you. I, I, he was a great guy. I'll never forget John Amos. I didn't realize that he had been in Roots. And we were doing that show. And they became more and more agitated and nervous as, as time went on. And I said to myself, I wonder what's wrong, you know? Well, it finally came out that they were going to open up in Roots that night. And I said, what are you worried about? I said, well, you know, I, I said, did you do good? I said, well, I think I did. I said, then don't worry about it. It'll all turn out nice. Please, don't worry about it. They'll take care of it all. Don't worry about it, you know? And Well, I kind of settled him down a little bit, you know? He opened up in one of the greatest television shows ever made, I believe. And God bless him, he was just absolutely wonderful. But you see, he was tense, and he was... And I said, uh, how do you feel now? He said, much better. And he's going on to so many wonderful things in his life. God bless him. You couldn't ask for a better man than John Amos. I love working with him. It was marvelous. Really good guy. Yeah. Oh, fine actor. I get the impression. I mean, I watched you for two and a half weeks on that cruise. I watched you for years in the movies. I'm watching you now. It seems to me that you have a wonderful time no matter what you're doing. Well, I think that's the whole thing of, of living. I mean, if you're going to live, why live in a depression? That's not living. But if you can live in an uplift, in, a, in something that, hey, man, I woke up this morning, I'm breathing. <laughs> this is what it's all about. You know, I'm 88 years old, and I, I don't feel it at all. Sometimes I do, you know, in the back or in the leg or something like that. But believe me, it's all in what's up here. And if you can, I'm saying this to the public, if you don't mind, if you believe in yourself and get it into your head that you're going to be good today, hey, you got it made, man. Everybody asks me, uh, well, how you feeling? I said, any better and I'd be in a pine box. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so who laughs? We all laugh. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Am I right? You're totally right. That's it. I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> sure. Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. My goodness. SpongeBob. Uh, you know, before that, I did, I did um, All Dogs Go to Heaven. I even made... I'm very, very proud of it, too. I made a, 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 a musical out of All Dogs Go to Heaven for a Christmas show. 
And I must say, uh, they said that I have a very good voice, you know, for, for singing and everything else. I, I, I always felt that I could never sing a note, but I was recently told by an opera singer, you should study uh, your voice, you know, because you've got a good voice. And I would laughingly, you know, just toss it aside. But to me, it was a great achievement, you know, uh, uh, doing a musical. Now, uh, because I did All Dogs Go to Heaven, they must have heard, and uh, so they called me in for SpongeBob. And I went in, and, um, and we did it, you know. And the very first year was wonderful. And then, of course, um, something happened. They shut down for over a year. And, but they were showing reruns all the time. Well, uh, now I recently went back to uh, do another show, and it was wonderful. But I must say... Hold on one second. We're getting uh, sirens. I'm sorry. It picks up? Sometimes. Just to be safe. Yeah. Okay. I think we're good again. But I must say, the power of SpongeBob... You see it in everywhere, you know, in lunch boxes and this and that and then and everything that you could possibly imagine. And I had just given a speech at the press club in Washington, D.C., which was quite an honor for me, you know. And while I was I'd finished, you know, and, and I'd gotten through, the fellow came up and said, uh, listen, Mr. Borgnine, he said, would you mind saying hello to a little bunch of Girl Scouts here? They just sent a whole bunch of cookies to our men in Iraq. Would you mind? I said, no, not at all. So I went over there, and the woman is saying, oh, this man is a very important actor and has done so many things. You know, and I picked up on the end of it. I said, have any of you ever seen my movies? Absolutely a blank, just like that fellow, you know, from McHale's Navy. And suddenly I had an idea. I said, how many of you have ever seen SpongeBob? Yes, yes, we know it. I said, how many of you remember Mermaid Man? Yes. I said, shake hands, I'm Mermaid Man. Well, the, 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 the whole world was mine. <laughs> Those little girls flocked around, made autographed pictures, everything. You could. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. They didn't know from Oscars. They didn't know from this. They didn't know from that. But they did know, you know, SpongeBob and Mermaid Man. Boy, and I want to tell you something. One time I was in uh, going to uh, uh, Australia to make a picture over there called uh, Summer of the 17th Doll. And I was to make it with Johnny Mills. And um, they said, you have to uh, uh, find out where uh, you, you pick up pick up the language of, uh, of what the Australians do, you know, and and I thought, hey, this would be a good chance for me to find out, you know, where the Australian. So I listened around, and when I got there, they assigned me a driver, and they said, where do you want to go? And I said, take me down to Willamaloo Docks. What? You can't go to Willamaloo Docks. I said, why not? I said, well, they'll kill you. I said, come on, you know, are you crazy? Nobody's going to kill anybody. Well, we went down there, and this fella, this, this driver of mine was just, he, please don't go, please. Well, we walked in, and there's a hush. It's like walking into somebody's home, you know, because you don't belong there unless you actually, you know, uh, are part of the group of that certain, you know, place where they go for beer. I walked in, and I said, howdy. I said, I'd like a couple of schooners, one for me and one for my partner here. And that fellow looked at me, and he looked at me. Hey! He said, look it! Here's Mikhail! <laughs> <laughs> I was the biggest thing in Australia with Mikhail's Navy than you've ever seen in your life. And when Marty came out, I was a national hero. <laughs> it was amazing. Amazing. And you go all over the world and people recognize you. All over the world. Uh, Next time in our final segment, Ernest Borgnine shares what it's like to be famous all over the world. He talks about his most famous and beloved guest spot as the man in the mountain on Little House on the Prairie. He also questions his life 
choice as an actor. And years before it was written, Ernest Borgnine revealed what he was planning to call his autobiography, which I recommend you go out and get. It's a great conclusion to a great conversation, and you'll want to catch it. See you then. Till then, why not subscribe, and why not become a patron member?